Chain ringing is a style of bell ringing developed in England where instead of playing recognizable tunes, we change the order of the bells and make a sort of river of sound, if you will. Upstairs, about two floors, there are eight bells which are mounted on wheels like this. Um, and they have these two extra pieces of wood here. And what that lets us do is we sort of raise the bell until it gets so it's standing mouth up like this. Once it's mouth up, we can very easily, without putting in much energy at all, make it go all the way to the other mouth up position. And what this does is it means that the bell strikes or makes it sound when it's facing outward, so the sound travels. When we ring, we start with the bells ringing a descending scale, and then we'll go into a method, which is a pattern of ringing the bells. Everyone has memorized this pattern, and each bell changes order so that they should sound very even while we're ringing, but they're each in a different place. I think the most important skill for bell ringing is listening to your specific bell. So when you pull off that rope, you need to know, like, in the next however milliseconds, the bell's going to ring. Everyone's got a rope, and the whole time, everyone is kind of looking at each other and say, okay, I'm in the right place. These people are in the right place. They're ringing before me, so I'm going to stare at them intently until I know that they've rung, and then I'm going to keep ringing my own thing. And it's kind of this weird mix of a thing that's very musical, but also very, very social as well. I love ringing because it's both challenging and meditative, and so I can only think about ringing when I'm ringing, and it's a wonderful uh, release from all my other worries in the world. I just love pulling on the rope and just hearing the bell swing and out into the town of Boston. Our bells are not hung for playing songs. They, they ring what's called a peal. It sounds beautiful. It sounds like bells cascading over the hills, it's beautiful. Uh, but it will not be a song because of the mechanics of how we ring the bells, because it takes almost two seconds for the bell to go around and back. It will not, it will not sound like a tune that you recognize. Plain is a complicated word, but we are making uh, permutations of the bells. The idea is that instead of just ringing the ascending scale, we will uh, change the orders of the bells. So we might go from one, two, three, four, five, six to two, one, four, three, six, five. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is to start with the descending scale and go through a set of permutations without ever repeating a permutation until you wind up back at the descending scale. When we ring, we start with the bells ringing a descending scale, and then we'll go into a method, which is a pattern of ringing the bells. Everyone has memorized this pattern, and each bell changes order so that they should sound very even while we're ringing, but they're each in a different place. Uh, the methods are named after all sorts of things. Some of them are named after people. Stedman is a famous bell ringer who, who wrote his own method. A lot of them are named after places like Cambridge or London or Boston, although we don't ring Boston very much. <laughs> you ring Somerville. And um, some of them are named after, you can ring a new method and name it after whatever you want. The number of methods that any group of ringers knows is going to vary widely. Um, like, there are some people who know maybe a few hundred methods off the top of their head. That's probably a lot. There, but um, most people will probably learn between, I could probably ring any of 20 different methods without having to look at them. Um, and I could probably ring another 10 or 15 if I had a little, few moments to think about it. There's probably about 10 methods we can all ring on a moment's notice. Um, if we work there, are, you know, we can learn more. It'll take a while for you to learn and really master your first couple methods, and then after that, they're just you. You kind of sense the variations on a theme, and you can you can kind of figure out the general patterns that occur in each method, and then learning them becomes a lot easier. Sometimes when we're learning a new method, you can memorize the start of one, like what one bell does first, and then as a point of laziness, you don't want to learn all the other bells, so you just go to that one first because you know what it does initially. But for the most part, we try to mix up what bells we ring as much as possible, mostly because that helps us learn the methods. Uh, that, pre that prevents us from being lazy when we're learning the methods. We have to know exactly what happens at each bell, but it also gives us a greater variety of, of strengths. Just getting used to different bells means you have more flexibility when, say, you want to visit another tower or you want to just try something uh, uh, more interesting or more difficult. 
Oh, we're musicians. Oh, musicians. <laughs> we're, we're musicians. <laughs> Mathematics can explain some of it, but you need much more musical skill than you need mathematical skill to be a bell ringer. Strength is not a factor at all. Strength actually, in many cases, can paper over bad ringing. So the ringing is all about, it's all about timing. Gravity is doing most of the work for you. When the bell, you know, is upside down and it's swinging down, gravity is going to carry that bell down for you. It's all just about at what point do you add a little bit of extra strength. And actually, if you're trying to kind of muscle your bell in and around, you're actually ringing reasonably badly. Uh, and when if you and if you go to another tower that have heavier bells, you're gonna be you're gonna be in for a rough time. So it's actually much more about timing and precision and rhythm than it is about strength. The tenor bell, which weighs about what is it? Fifteen hundred pounds. Fifteen hundred pounds. I mean, it sounds a lot, but just hearing it and then having just to pull just to touch for it to hear it is great. Uh, I've been ringing for 11 years, 10 years, somewhere in that range. Um, I'm currently the, the ringing master and steeple keeper here, which means I, I'm in charge of the ringing and in charge of the bells. Um, and I like ringing mostly because, well, I like ringing for a lot of reasons. It's social, but it's also, it's, it stretches you in a way. You, you have to work at it, but it's not impossible. Thank you.